Hello everyone, my name is Sue. Welcome to our assembly. Today we are thinking all about rules. Are rules easy to keep, easy to follow? Or are they hard to keep, hard to follow rules? I wanna know what you think. So I am gonna read out some rules and you have to decide, are they easy to keep or are they hard to keep rules? So decide in your room, which side of your room is gonna be easy and which side is gonna be hard. Okay, so, and then when I read out a rule, if you think it is an easy to keep rule, a rule that's easy to follow, run to the easy side. If you think it's hard to keep, a hard to follow rule, run to the hard side. And if you think it's somewhere in the middle, then you stand somewhere in the middle. Or maybe it's, it's quite easy or quite hard. You can kind of stand anywhere, but have one side is easy and one side is hard. And if you're feeling super lazy this morning, you can stay where you are and point to easy or point to hard. Okay, so the first rule is you must wash your hands after you've been to the toilet. You must wash your hands after you've been to the toilet. You decide, is that an easy to keep rule or a hard to keep rule? Which way are you gonna go? What did you think? I think that's quite an easy to keep rule, but maybe you think differently. Okay, next rule. You must look and listen for cars before you cross the road. Easy to keep, hard to keep rule. You must look and listen for cars before you cross the road. Okay, back to the middle. Here's our next rule. You must keep your room tidy. Ooh, you must keep your room tidy. That's a harder rule for me to follow. Which way are you gonna go? Do you think that's an easy to follow rule or a hard to follow rule? Brilliant. Okay, last one. You must eat five pieces of fruit a day. You must eat five pieces of fruit a day. I think I'd be somewhere in the middle for that because some days it's easy, but other days I find it hard. Well, I would like to tell you a story now, and it's a story from this book, the Bible, which is a special book for Christians. And in the story I'm going to tell you today, God gives his people rules. God gives his people rules. And then we find out if the people found it easy or hard to keep them. But I'm going to need your help to tell this story. You need to find some objects to help us tell the story. You might not have these exact objects in your house, so you need to use your imagination and find something that can be that thing. Okay, there are five things to find and you have one minute to find them. And I've got one minute too. I wonder if we'll manage. Okay, I'll leave them on the screen so you know what they are, but you need to find these five things. You need to find something that could be a mountain something that could be a mountain. That's number one. Number two, you need to find something that could be Moses. Moses was the leader of God's people. So, I don't know, a cuddly toy or a small doll or anything you can find that can be Moses, the leader of God's people. You need to find something white. You need to find something shiny. And you need to find a stone. Okay, five things. Something to be a mountain, something to be Moses, something white, something shiny, and a stone. We've got one minute. Are you ready? Get set, go. Have you found your five objects? Did you manage to find them in a minute? Or did you need to pause the video and restart? It doesn't matter if you did, don't worry. Here's what I found. I found a tip. It's gonna be my mountain. 
I found, oh, Moses was the next one. A sloth, he's gonna be Moses for me in this story. Uh, something white was a face cloth. Something shiny, a fork, and a stone from my garden. Brilliant, if you've got your five objects, tell the story with me as we go along. So in this story, God's people are called the Israelites. Moses is their leader and they were slaves in Egypt, but God rescued them and helped them escape. And he did some amazing things along the way, making sure they always had food and water and parting a sea so they could get through it, but the Egyptians couldn't chase them. The Bible says that they stopped and they camped in the desert at the bottom of a mountain. It was called Mount Sinai. And then the Bible says that one day Moses, take Moses, put him up the mountain, went up the mountain and talked to God. And God said to Moses, Moses, I'm going to give you some rules. I'm going to give you and the Israelites some rules. And if you keep them, you will be my special people. Well, when Moses came back down the mountain, he chatted about that with the Israelites and they said, yes, we will keep God's rules and we will be his special people. They were pleased. Well, three days later, the Israelites and Moses woke up to amazing things happening. There was cloud covering the mountain. Take your white thing, put it on top of the mountain. There was cloud covering the mountain. There was thunder, clap your hands. And there was lightning. Take your shiny thing and make it lightning. Brilliant. And then they heard a loud trumpet blast. Can you make a trumpet blast? I think yours will be better than mine. And then they all heard God's voice as he spoke to them and he gave them 10 rules. We call them the 10 commandments. Moses went up the mountain, put Moses back up the mountain. That's great. And he spoke to God some more and God explained the rules and gave him some other rules. And then this is when we need our stone. God wrote the rules on tablets of stone and gave them to Moses. Well, Moses was up the mountain, the Bible says, for 40 days. He was talking to God and understanding the rules and God was writing them down on the stone. But at the bottom of the mountain, the Israelites, even though they'd heard the rules, they'd heard God giving them, they were rem should have known all the amazing things God had done for them, they should have remembered, they forgot to keep the rules. They start, well the first rule was to only have one God, to worship only God and they forgot that and they made another God and worshipped a statue instead. Well Moses when he heard about it was furious and upset and God was furious too and Moses went down the mountain, oh my mountain fell down, he smashed the tablets of stone and he was so disappointed and so upset with the Israelites. They hadn't managed to keep God's rules. Well, did you manage to tell the story along with me? Well done if you did. Did your Moses stay on top of the mountain or did he fall off? Did your mountain fall over like mine? Well, I wonder why those Israelites didn't keep God's rules. They had heard God telling them the rules. The Israelites, like Christians today, believed that God had made the world, that he was in charge of the world and was in control of it. And he understood it best. So he knew best. He knew what rules would help them live the best life and keep them safe. Maybe they thought he was just being mean and being strict. Maybe it hadn't occurred to them that he was just trying to keep them safe. Maybe they were just bored of waiting for Moses to get back down the mountain. I don't know, but I do wonder why they didn't keep those rules. Let's pause and think about us for a little bit. During this coronavirus outbreak, we have rules to follow, don't we? And maybe like me, you're finding it a little harder and harder to follow those rules. Maybe like the Israelites, we're getting a bit bored of waiting for something to happen and, and, um, and getting a bit bored of keeping the rules. But it's so important that we keep, keep on following the rules, isn't it? And I think there are three things we can do 
to help us. Three things we should think about and remember that will help us stay motivated to keep following these rules during the coronavirus outbreak. And that first thing is that we need to remember who has given us the rules. The Israelites seem to forget that it was God who had given them the rules. But let's not forget who's given us the rules. It's not just somebody who doesn't know very much. It's experts, isn't it? Experts who are doing their best to understand all the information and make the best rules and the most sensible rules for our country. So firstly, number one, let's remember who has given us the rules. Number two, let's remember why we have these rules. I wondered if the Israelites had forgotten that God had given them the rules to keep them safe and help them live their best life. And that's why we've got these rules, isn't it? Not because somebody in government is being mean and horrible to us all, but because they want to keep us safe and they want us to have the best life possible. So let's remember, number one, who gave us the rules, and number two, why we have the rules, that they are to keep us safe. And number three, let's think about what we're really doing when we keep the rules. Because I think when we follow these rules during the coronavirus outbreak, the thing that we're really doing is loving one another. We are loving our friends and family, showing them love by following the rules. That story I told you from the Bible is near the beginning of the Bible, but if we skip forward in the Bible to the part where Jesus lives on the earth, um, Jesus says, that he kind of gives us a new commandment, he kind of shortens all the Ten Commandments um, into one, and he says the most important thing to do is to love God and to love each other. And I think one of the ways that we love each other at the moment is by keeping the coronavirus rules and protecting our family and our friends through that. So maybe if we remember those three things, that it's experts who have given us the rules, that they've given us the rules to keep us safe and help us live our best lives. And by following the rules, we are doing that most important thing of loving one another. I think if we remember all those three things, that will help us to stay motivated and keep following the rules. I want to leave you from this assembly with a little challenge. We're right at the end now of our assembly, but here's a challenge for you. Can you think of oh, something that you can do that will make following these rules during the coronavirus outbreak more fun for other people? Because the more fun we can make it, the easier they're going to be to keep as well. What could you do that would make following these rules more fun for you and for other people? Maybe you could organise a movie night at home for your family. Maybe you could invent a new game to play with your family. Maybe you could um, phone or write a letter to or video call um, some of your friends or your, your grandparents or somebody in your family and cheer them up. Make following the rules more fun for somebody. So thank you so much for joining us for this assembly. And I would love to hear how you've, you've accepted that challenge and what you've done. How can you make following the rules during this coronavirus outbreak more fun for everybody so that we can all keep going, following the rules and keeping the rules?